So we assume that if we pray hard enough, if we fast long enough, that eventually God will acquiesce to our request. But there's some times where you might pray, you might fast, you might do what you think is necessary, and God still says no. <laughs> and what do you do when God tells you no? I grew up in an old school Baptist church and the worship leader would get up there and the worship leader would just say to the congregation, God is good all the time. And the audience would respond all the time, God is good. And with that worship leader knowing what it taught me is that God ain't just been good to me, but God has definitely been good to somebody up in here. The reason why you made your way to the 1130 service it's because God has been good. Pray with me. God, we recognize your goodness. When you woke us up this morning, it was just another taste of your goodness. New mercy you showed upon us and bestowed upon us when we're not even worthy of it. God, today your people come to hear a word from God. All week we've heard what the news had to say. Went to work and we heard what our co-workers and boss had to say. Went home and heard what our relatives and family had to say. Called a good friend and heard what they had to say. God, we came to this church not to hear from anybody else's opinion, but we wanted to hear from the throne of grace. Talk now, God. Speak now, God, for your servants are listening. It's in the name of Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. Alpha Street, it is always a privilege and an honor to stand behind this sacred desk. I thank my pastor, Pastor Howard John Wesley, for this opportunity to stand behind this sacred desk. It's not one that I take lightly. I believe there's a word from God today. If you have your Bibles, I invite you to journey with me to 1 Chronicles 28. I'm going to give you some time to find 1 Chronicles. I'm going to ask that you would assume a posture of reverence that is appropriate for our various levels of ability. To reverence the reading of God's holy word. Be reading from the New King James Version of the Bible. But as long as your book says Bible on the front of it, you should be good. Here's what it says. Now David assembled at Jerusalem all the leaders of Israel, the officers of the tribes and the captains of the divisions who served the king, the captains over thousands and captains over hundreds, and the stewards over all the substance and possessions of the king and of his sons, with the officials, the valiant men, and all the mighty men of valor. Then King David rose to his feet and said, Hear me, my brethren and my people. I had it in my heart to build a house of rest for the ark of the covenant of the Lord and for the footstool of our God and had made preparations to build it. But God said to me, you shall not build a house for my name because you have been a man of war and have shed blood. However, the Lord God of Israel chose me above all of the house of my father to be king over Israel forever. For he has chosen Judah to be the ruler and of the house of Judah, the, the, fob, the house of Judah, the house of my father and among the sons of my father, he was pleased with me to make me king over all Israel. And of all my sons, for the Lord has given me many sons, he has chosen my son Solomon to sit on the throne of the kingdom of the Lord of Israel. Now, he said to me, it is your son Solomon who shall build my house and my courts 
for I have chosen him to be my son and I will be his father. That's enough. As you sit down, why don't you nudge the neighbor sitting next to you? Help, them, help me play preacher and tell them the title of my sermon. I want to preach from the subject, a balm for a broken heart. A balm for a broken heart. Church, you, if you've ever had any experience in residential life, you have some form of sympathy with me uh, when I tell you that in order to make ends meet while I was at Duke University, I had to become a graduate resident. Okay. Now, th that meant I had free housing, but the caveat was I had to live in a dorm room with over 150 freshman students. Y'all pray for me, I'm still recovering from that. Uh, <laughs> And I did like my job. I really did enjoy my job. I really did like my job. But it just seemed as if I, trouble always ran into me at the most inconvenient times. As a graduate resident, I frequently had to let people in their room after locking themselves out. I had to write them up for inappropriate behavior or even had to have one-on-one -on -one conversations with them. And it seemed as if I always had to put out a fire at the most inconvenient of times. I remember there was this one time where I, I, I was finishing up my GR obligations for the morning and, and, and I noticed from my periphery that the shuttle bus that I take to go to class was beginning to pull off. Now, y'all, I, I wanna help you paint this picture because I lived on East Campus. My class was on West Campus. The way my legs are set up, I'm not about to walk from East Campus to West Campus. So I said to myself, if I miss this bus, I'm going to miss this class. And, 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 and what I decided to do was I made a run for it to catch the bus. But y'all, I was really bold because I wanted to get on this bus, so I ran for the bus and then I even ran in front of the bus. Ran in front of the bus and y'all know how bus drivers get, they don't like to open the doors after they've already pulled off, but I demanded that the bus driver let me on this bus. After realizing uh, that I was ready to risk it all, the bus driver acquiesced and he let me on to the bus. And, and, and as I'm trying to catch my breath on the bus, I, I just noticed that the bus was a bit of a bumpier ride than usual. You know, it was just bumpy. The, 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 the bus was jerking back and forth, but you know, I, I begged to get on this bus so I didn't really pay it any mind. Till about seven minutes into my bus ride, the bus came to a screeching halt. The bus driver got on the PA system and said, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I regret to inform you, but this bus, has just broken down. Now I'm visibly angry at this point because I'm recalling in my mind all I did to get on this bus. Let me remind you, you might have been sleeping. I, 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 was re, I, I re reminded myself that I already had a busy morning. I reminded that I made a run for it to get on the bus. I risked my life by running in front of the bus. I begged and demand the bus driver to let me on this bus only for the bus to break down before it brought me where I wanted to go. Uh, let me help somebody in here. Uh, uh, I started to think as I was walking to class how interesting it is how you can get on something expecting it to bring you somewhere only for it to break down before it brings you where you want it to be. Let me help someone because you still think I'm talking about Duke University shuttle. You've ever had life break down on you? You, you, you you've ever expected did the promotion and got a pink slip? You, 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 you ever expected an acceptance letter and got a rejection letter instead? You, you ever thought you were headed towards uh, I do and then somebody says I don't? You, you, you've ever been in a place where you had your heart broken? If you've had your heart broken, 
Stick around because this brother David provides us a remedy on how to get over a broken heart. Now, I know when I say King David, you already expect a type of sermon because you're used to hearing about the warrior David, the one who slays Goliath. You're used to hearing about the humble David, the one who hides from Saul. You're used to hearing about the psalmist David, the one who knows how to eloquently express his emotions in the Psalter, but that's not the David we're introduced to in the text. This morning, we're introduced to a David who's had his heart broken. We're introduced to a David who has some unfulfilled dreams. We're introduced to a David who expected some things out of life only for, to get a negative return. Now, I know church folk, grew up in church all my life. Somebody in here is thinking to themselves, what does David have to complain about? Uh, David is a king. David is popular. David wrote the book of Psalms. It was a New York Times bestseller. David is popular. David doesn't have anything to worry about, but unless you fall into this false narrative of believing that you can get stuff and somehow avoid from having a broken heart, let me remind you that you can be a man or a woman after God's own heart and still end up with a broken heart. You, you, you. You, 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 you can have accolades, you can have degrees, people can call you whatever you want them to call you, but that doesn't make you exempt from life, the bottom dropping out from life. It doesn't matter how successful you are, where you work, if you live long enough. I know there's a seasoned saint in here who can agree that if you keep on living, life will happen to you. And if life has ever happened to you, Stick around because David provides us a remedy on how to get over a broken heart. In the text, David is at the end of his kingship. David is at the end of his reign. He's giving his exit speech. And as David is preparing his exit speech, isn't it interesting how David talks about heartbreak that happened 11 chapters ago? Because some of you already realize that some hurt happened 11 chapters ago, 11 days ago, 11 months ago, 11 hours ago, 11 years ago, and sometimes that hurt still keeps coming back up. He's on the end of his journey as a king, and he's still recounting the hurt that happened 11 chapters ago. David gathers all of his mighty men he gathers them and he says to them, I had it in my heart to build a temple for God. I even prepared for it and God told me no. Can I tell you what makes this hurt so difficult? Uh, two things that make this hurt difficult. Uh, the first thing that makes this so difficult for David is because David has to near, hear a no from the God of his yes. Yeah. Yeah. And most of us, we aren't equipped enough in our faith to handle a no from God. Because we assume that if we pray hard enough, if we fast long enough, that eventually God will acquiesce to our request. But there's some times where you might pray, you might fast, you might do what you think is necessary, and God still says no. <laughs> and what do you do when God tells you no? You know, another reason why this is so hard for David, this is hard for David because David has good intentions. David says, I want to build a temple for God. And by all accounts, building a temple isn't a bad thing. We have people trying to build a wall for billions of dollars, and by all accounts, just wanting to build a temple isn't a bad thing. But let me tell you uh, that David has to learn the hard way <laughs> that not every good thing is a God thing. 
you, 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 you think just because it's a good thing, it's a God thing. But if I have a Bible reader, you know that the Bible says every good and perfect gift is from God. You know that the Bible says Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. You'll know that the Bible says when Adam and Eve saw that the fruit was good, then they ate of it. Because just because it looks good doesn't mean it's from God. And you have to learn how to maintain a good thing versus a God thing. I know it looks good to you. I know it smells good. Where's the right cologne? I know it has the right shape. I know it pays the right amount of money. But just because it looks good doesn't mean it's from God. And the real measurement of your maturity is not shouting when God cancels the bad thing. The real measurement of your maturity is standing flat-footed when God cancels the good thing. You gotta learn to trust God even when God takes away the job you wanted. You gotta trust God even when the business loan falls through. You gotta trust God even when the relationship doesn't work. You have to learn to trust God. Yeah. Yeah, here we go. David provides us a remedy on how to get over a broken heart. Here it is. The first thing you have to learn to do is accept God's reason. Now, now, now notice I didn't say you need to agree with the decision. No, that's not what I said. I said you have to learn to accept God's decision. You, you, you know, when God tells David he will not build the temple, what God tells David is you won't build the temple because you've been a man of war and have shed blood. What God wants David to know is that you have too much blood on your hands to build the temple. What, 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 what God is trying to avoid is a leader who thinks they can represent God and not take responsibility for their actions. Let, let, let me help you. Let, 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 me, let me help you make it, make it plain. Drop it down for your seat for you can digest this. You, you can't brag about unemployment rate going down if you won't take responsibility for loss of life at the border. You can't take brag about criminal justice reform and not take responsibility about the rhetoric you've been using that's been causing a rise in hate crimes because you can't represent God and not take responsibility. If you're going to represent God, you have to take responsibility. And the problem we have with accepting God's reason is sometimes accepting God's reason is an indictment on ourselves. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you don't want to accept what God has to say because sometimes God says the reason why you don't have a thing is because of yourself. God says sometimes I can't give you what you want because you have too much blood on your hands. And I know you wanted me to talk about that annoying co-worker that ruined it for you. I know you came here to, you wanted me to preach about all of your haters. You wanted me to preach about how many people was holding you down. But sometimes you need to check if you have blood on your hands. Yeah, yeah, it's... It's easy to blame everybody else for what somebody else didn't do, but sometimes the reason why our heart is broken is some actions we did ourselves. Yeah, 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 yeah. These are for the mature Christians today. These are for the mature Christians today. Yeah, uh, let, let, let me help you because I know church folk, Reverend Marcia. I told you I grew up with church folk all my life. My dad's a pastor. Grew up in church folk all my life. And... Uh, Someone is sitting in here and saying, well, that's cool, Reverend Mark, but I didn't do anything. Someone is saying to themselves, so that's cool, that preach, that shout, but I didn't do anything. You, 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 you know, here it is. This is the word for you, and I'm going to take it slow so you get it right. Uh, uh, even when you feel like you haven't done anything wrong, right? You have to trust that God's reason for God's decision will always be greater than the rationale for your desire. Yeah. 
Did you get it? I want you to... <laughs> I want you to make sure you tweet that thing right. Uh, if even when you don't understand what God is doing, you have to believe that God's reason for God's decision will always be greater than the rationale for your desire. Let me put it this way. I heard Dr. Cosby say it like this. You have to trust God's character even when you can't understand God's conduct. You have to learn in life that I got to trust. I know too much about God to quit right here. I know too much about God's character to give up right here. I've been through too much with God for me to die here. Yeah, yeah, I, I know you have a broken heart, uh, uh, but don't allow your broken heart to break your spirit. I, I know your heart is broken and I... I know you wanted that job. I know you wanted that acceptance letter. I know you wanted the loan for the business, but don't allow your broken heart break your spirit. Here, here's the second thing. Now, not only do you have to accept, accept God's reason, you have to learn to acknowledge God's yeses. It's hard to hear a no from God. It's really hard to hear a no from God, expect, especially when you're invested in it. When you have too much stake to see this thing end right here. Uh, uh, but we have to learn, uh, uh, we have to learn not to assume and not to act as if God saying no in one area is God saying no in every area of our lives. Here's what David says. David says, God told me I'm not going to build the temple. However. Yeah. Woo, there's only about 12 saints that came to worship today. Oh, balcony, I'm going to try it with you. God told me I won't build the temple, however. All right, we have an online ministry. This is for y'all because nobody in the sanctuary this morning. God told me, I'm not going to build the temple, however. And let me just remind somebody about their however. You didn't get the job, but when you went to the doctor's office, you had a clean bill of health. You didn't get the acceptance letter, but when you went in, God provided for you. You didn't know how you were going to provide for yourself, but God made a way. And don't act as if a no from God is God always saying no. Let, let, let me help y'all. Let me, let, let, let me help y'all. Let, let, let me help you paint the picture. Uh, I, I, I love my nephews. I, I have a lot of nieces and nephews. And uh, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, two of my nephews uh, are coming to spend uh, two weeks with Uncle Mark next week. Y'all pray for me. I'm already tired. <laughs> and, 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 and the oldest one, he's 12. He's actually pretty chill. He can take care of himself and he, he, he's real laid back. But the second oldest, he's five. And y'all, he's a special child. He's a special, he's a... He is something. He is something. Uh, he is a, what you would call a what have you done for me lately type of guy. <laughs> La last year, I had a chance to babysit him. His mom and his dad were out, and I was home from seminary, so they asked me to uh, 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 look after him. I said, no, bet. It's Uncle Mark time, Malachi. We're about to, we're about to do this thing. And, and y'all, I, I, I don't have any children, so um, I learned, I thought I wanted a lot of children, but after babysitting Malachi, I said, Lord, <laughs> Lord, uh, <laughs> Lord, do, do your will, not my will, whatever you want to do, God, <laughs> whatever you want to do. Because uh, Malachi would wake up before the sun gets up, and, and he would say, Uncle Mark, uh, let's play superheroes. Like, Malachi, if you don't go to bed right now, I'm like, we're not playing superheroes. Wake me up in the two hours. And you best believe as soon as it was two hours, he came right back. Said, all right, Uncle Mark, now I'm hungry and I want some eggs. And I said, well, Malachi, there, is, there isn't any eggs. But he kept on fussing and he wanted eggs. So I had to leave the house and go buy eggs and come back. And then about a few hours later, boy, can that five-year-old eat? Oh, my God. 
He, he starts, he says, I want some food. And he said, I want some ice cream. And I told him there wasn't any ice cream. So I had to leave and go get some ice cream. And so I said, oh, this is enough, Malachi. This is enough. This is enough. Uh, I said, I'm, I, I need to go get some work. I was working, and while I was working, I realized I was missing some utensils, and I decided to uh, go to Target. Now, 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 on our way to Target, he saw McDonald's. So guess what we did? We went to McDonald's. But I learned a valuable lesson. When you get into a department store, and you have a child with you, there are certain aisles you don't go down with a child. And the toys aisle is one of those aisles you don't go down. Because he started picking up every little toy and said, Uncle Mark, I want this. Uncle Mark, I want that. And, and I was fed up. I said, Malachi, uh, no. <laughs> you wouldn't believe what Malachi said to me. Malachi looked me dead in the eye and had the nerve to say, Uncle Mark, you never get me anything. Now, 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 I, I was upset because, because I'm reminded that this morning he woke me up at the crack of dawn talking about he wanted some eggs, I had to leave and go get some eggs. I was reminded that he wanted some ice cream, I had to go get him some ice cream. I was reminded when we were going to Target and we had to stop by McDonald's and I said, Malachi, don't you ever say that I haven't done anything for you because if you think back to this morning, there was McDonald's, there was ice cream, and there was eggs. Some of you still think I'm talking about my nephew but sometimes we act as if when God says no one time God has always said no but you need to look back over your life and thank God for all the yeses God has done for you I feel like preaching right there. You need to look back over your life and say, God, I may not got in where I wanted to, but I thank you, you got me in somewhere. God, I'm thankful that all the doors you opened for me. God, I'm thankful all the ways you made for me. God, I'm thankful for all that you've done for me. Oh, do I have somebody at the 1130 service who can look back over their lives and say, God, I'm just thankful. God, I'm just thankful for all the ways you made for me. God, I'm just thankful for all the doors you opened for me. Here's the word for somebody. Don't allow your broken heart cause you to have an ungrateful heart. David says, I realize I'm not going to be uh, the one who builds the temple. But let me not get too crazy. God chose me <laughs> out of all my brothers. <laughs> the reason why your neighbor, your neighbor forgot about David's story. When Samuel came to anoint David, David wasn't inside. <laughs> David was passed by and David says I know too much about God's character to act as if God said no once it's God always saying no in my life and you need to realize that God has yeses in your life don't act as if a no from God is God saying no in every area of your life truth be told uh, we, we have praise and worship that is overdue <laughs> truth be told we have thanksgiving that's long overdue you woke up this morning didn't pay any mind to it you got into a car that you wanted to drive didn't pay any mind to it you put on your five hundred dollar shoes didn't pay any mind to it you put on the good dress today didn't pay any mind to it you put on your custom-made suit didn't pay any mind to it and you have to look back over your life and say I'm too blessed to be thinking about all the no's God has done in my life listen I've made up in my mind that I'm not going to dwell on what God could have done. I have too much praise and thanksgiving for what God has already done. I, I, I got to go on to my last point. Uh, not only do you have to accept God's reason, not only do you have to acknowledge God's yeses, but here's the last thing. You have to learn to anticipate what's next. 
to learn to anticipate God's next. Here, here it is. I told you that this story happens about 11 chapters before we get to this one. And in chapter 17 is the first time we're introduced to David having a request to build the temple of God. Now, David goes to the prophet Nathan and says to Nathan, I have a desire to build the temple. Nathan says, David, okay, that seems okay. You do what's on your heart. God speaks to Nathan in Nathan's quiet time and says, well, hold up, Nathan. I, I need you to go back and tell David this one question. Y'all ready for this question? Because this is going to help somebody today. God said, ask David, did I ask him to build it? Now, 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 now. Your neighbor didn't get it. Because in my mind, David has a broken heart over something God never told him to build. Oh, oh, my, my. My, my. And could it be that sometimes we, our heart is broken over something God never even told us to get into to begin with? Is it possible that sometimes you over here crying at night over a relationship God never told you to get into, over a job God never told you to apply for, over a loan God never told you to submit, and sometimes you need to survey your life and ask yourself, did God tell me to build this? Because you can stop crying tonight if God never told you to get into the relationship with that joker to begin with. You, you can stop crying tonight if God never told you to apply to that school to begin with. David has to learn. If God never told you to get into it, there's no reason for you to be crying yourself to sleep. Here. David, Nathan says, hey, 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 uh, David, God wanted me to tell you uh, that uh, this thing that you're trying to do, that ain't God's will for your life. And 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 and, and then so what? Da God, Nathan says to David, is not only is it not God's will for your life, but you have too much blood on your hands. And uh, God actually said it's your son Solomon who's going to build it. I'm sorry. Now, here's what's the troubling part of this passage, Dr. Judy. In chapter 17, Nathan tells David that God told David, you aren't going to build the temple. Your son Solomon's going to build it. But if you keep reading to chapter 21, the beginning of chapter 21 tells us that David prepares for the temple to be built. Now, now, God already told David you aren't going to build this temple. Your son Solomon is going to build the temple. Chapter 21, David starts preparing for the temple to be built. 17, God says, you aren't going to build the temple. Your son Solomon is going to build the temple. In chapter 21, David starts building for the temple. Let me go slower because some of you are already missing it. In chapter 17, God says, you won't build the temple. Your son Solomon will build the temple. And in chapter 21, David starts preparing for the temple to be built. Now, the question you need to be asking right now, why would David starts preparing for what God said he ain't even going to build. Y'all ready for the answer? See, I believe what David realizes is a, a, a nuance in the language. God said, David, you aren't going to build the temple. Your son Solomon is going to build the temple. Now, you still ain't catch it. Because God never said the temple's not going to be built. What God did say was that you won't build the temple. 
And so what David begins to realize is just because God said no to me doesn't mean God said never to me. Uh, D David begins to realize that God may not build it the way I want to build it, but sometimes God will build it the way God wants to build it. I see somebody got it right here because you think a no from God means a never from God. But sometimes God will say no to you to show you that you won't build this thing the way you want to build it. But I'm going to build this thing the way I want to build it. And you have to learn. Here it is. You have to learn that a no from God is not a never from God. You have to learn that your last season isn't your last season. You have to learn that when you're working with God, you have to understand that that God still knows how to work things out. Okay, here it is. Here it is. I'm done. I'm out of time. I got to go. I, I, I know some of you, uh, I, some of you are still wondering what happened on that bus. Well, 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 the, I had a walk to class that day. And the next day, I saw the bus driver again. And, and, and the funny part is, the bus driver recognized me. He said, aren't you that brother, brother that ran for the bus yesterday? You know, I was a little embarrassed because you know, I was doing a lot the last, the previous day. And, and, and so I said, uh, oh, oh, yes, I am. He said, I've been thinking about you. He said, you, you, I just thought how you ran for that bus and then the bus ended up breaking down. It was out of my control and I'm sorry. And he says, you know what, uh, for all your troubles, I want to reimburse you. Now, now he, here's the thing, y'all. I was confused. This is a school shuttle. <laughs> it's a school shuttle. I didn't have to pay to get on the school shuttle. I said, sir, you, you must have got this confused. Uh, this is a school shuttle, and there is an affair to pay. I said, young man, I want to teach you something. I'm not paying you. I'm not reimbursing you for your fare. I want to reimburse you for your time. You got it. <laughs> he said, I'm not going to reimburse you for your fare. It was free. But what I did notice was the time that you wasted. And in case you still think I'm talking about this bus at Duke University, I came to stop by to let somebody know that God knows how to reimburse the time that you wasted in something that got broken. God knows how to reimburse your time for the years that you wasted. God knows how to reimburse your time for the job that went out. God knows how to reimburse your time for the things that you thought was going to happen. And I'm wondering if I have anybody who can testify that God knows how to get redeem the years that the locusts ate up. That devil thought that he had you broken. That devil thought that your mind was lost. But you need to serve the devil an eviction notice and let the devil know, guess what, devil? I'm back. God knows how to redeem my time. I'm back. God knows how to redeem my years. I'm back. And you just need to touch yourself and say, self, I'm back. Is there anybody at the 1130 service who can testify that all things work together for the good of they that love the Lord? Is there anybody who can testify that weeping indoors for a night? But joy cometh in the morning time. Is there anybody who can testify and say, I want to get my ears back? Anybody want to get their time back? Anybody want to get their life back? I came to tell somebody it's time to dream again. I came to tell somebody it's time to risk again. I came to tell somebody that it's time to love again. Because God knows how to redeem your time. If you believe it, shout yes. Shout yes. Shout yes. Somebody said, be not dismayed. Whatever be time. God will. God will. God will take care of you. And is there anybody at the Alfred Street Baptist Church who can testify that I'm back? You need to testify. Make a sound. Believe in your heart that this season is not my last season. Devil, you might have broke my heart, but you won't break my spirit. You might have
taken me out, but I'm back. And you need to look back over yourself and say, Self, I'm back. I feel God in this place. I feel God in this place. I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost in this place. I feel like somebody is about to get their bounce back. I feel like somebody is about to get their mind back. Somebody is about to get their home back. Somebody is about to get their life back. And if you believe it, say, preacher, you're talking to me. If you believe it, shout yes. Shout yes. Shout yes. Shout yes. Shout so you know hell knows you're serious. Shout so you know the devil knows you're serious. Shout so you know whoever broke your heart knows you're serious. this thing I'm coming out of this thing be not dismayed whatever be tired God will take care of you God knows how to redeem the years the locusts ate of. And it might have hurt your heart, but you need to make up in your mind it won't break your spirit. I want to I wanna pray. Be seated, please. I want to pray for the brokenhearted. I'm not going to invite you to come to the front, but I want to invite you to stand right where you are. If while I was preaching, you felt like that preacher's all up in my Kool-Aid. He's t telling me the flavor of that thing. I want you to stand right where you are. The Bible says he's a mender of the brokenhearted. The Bible says he is near to those with a broken spirit. I know some of you are CEOs and some of you, thank you Holy Spirit, some of you are the strong friend. And uh, uh, you don't want people to see you standing because you're the strong one and people aren't supposed to see you weak. I want this to be an act of faith that you're telling your past that you're back. If you could st remain standing. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh. For the hurt that remains and lingers, the hope, the, for, for the past that plays tricks in our minds, for the pain that keeps reoccurring every time we're having a good day or a good week, the, play, the pain that interferes whenever we feel like we're getting over it, God, we speak to that today. We speak to the pain of hurt and loss, the pain of thinking, God, I put too much time, energy, invested too much money to see this thing fail at the stages it's at now. We speak to the God who redeems, the God who reimburses. God, you are so much God that you don't give us more time. God, God, God you just... You, you make the time that we have better than the time that we lost. In a moment, in a snapping of your fingers, God, we can feel joy that we've never felt in 10 years. 
And God, our prayer is in that this moment, you would speak to every individual with a broken heart. The pain that carries the weight of feeling like I don't see how my life can get better. God, you're not a God of your last. You're a God of your next. And Lord, we stand firm believing that, God, what you're about to do is always greater than what you've already done. And so even when we can't imagine, we're so glad to be reminded that eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man what you have next for us. So in this moment, God, do your work of redeeming. Redeem every heart. Redeem every mind. Satan, we run you an eviction notice today to let you know that when I get back home, I'm going to have my mind back. I'm going to have my integrity back. I'm going to have my character back. I'm going to start thinking the way I used to think. I'm going to start dreaming the way I used to dream. I'm going to start writing the way I used to write. I'm going to start singing the way I used to sing. I'm going to start dancing the way I used to dance. God, we testify of your goodness, God. God, we know too much about you now to die right here believing that you don't have another plan for our lives. God, turn every rejection, every closed door into a blessing we could have never imagined. It's in Jesus' holy name we do pray. Amen. Come on, the Bible says let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Oh, come on, if you've been redeemed, you better say so. If you've been redeemed, you better say so. If you've been redeemed, you better say so. If you've been redeemed, say, God, I've been redeemed. God, I feel you're redeeming me now. I feel you're redeeming me now, God.